many Americans have no idea the lack of nutrition that is in their food, number one, and the amount of chemicals used in their food, number two. And unfortunately, it's gotten so out of hand that now we have countries like Germany creating television ads to support American children and their lack of nutrition. This is not a joke, guys. This is not a joke. Great Nations Eat TV put a commercial on titled Germany for America, helping American children have access to a nutritious diet. I couldn't help but not share this video with you guys. So no further ado, we're gonna check out this video and then I'm going to show you guys some of the biggest lies we've been told as Americans. And after the ad, I'm gonna show you guys the amount of chemicals used in our food compared to other nations as well as the food pyramid lie that we've been taught in school and what are the long-term ramifications of this? What are we seeing so far happen to our American children as well as the American population in regards to obesity, cancer, all these different terrible things that have been happening to our nation and its people. With no further ado, let's play this video, let's check it out and then we'll dive into some statistics. Sie hat nur wenig Zugang zu nahrhaften Lebensmitteln. Ihre schlechte Ernährung kann zu Diabetes, Herzkrankheiten und einer teuren Abhängigkeit vom Staat führen. 49 Millionen Amerikaner leiden unter Lebensmittelunsicherheit. Sie sind hungrig nach mehr als nach der nächsten Mahlzeit. Sie sind hungrig nach einem Wechsel. Amerika braucht unsere Hilfe. Jetzt. What an embarrassing commercial that the supposedly greatest nation is struggling with nutrition so much that we're having Germany put on an ad campaign for our diets because it's gotten so out of control. As you can see, they talked about heart disease. They talked about depending on the government because of our lack of proper nutrition. So my goal here in this video is to expose to you guys how many chemicals and just the lies you've been told about nutrition in regards to the United States government and the food pyramid that they give us, all these different things. So let's check it out right here. So here we have the US versions of snacks versus snacks in the United Kingdom. And if you look at the ingredients without even diving into the specific details of what these ingredients are, you can just see US version right here versus UK version, just in a bag of Doritos. Look at the difference, look at that. Quaker Roach right here, Look at the US version of ingredients, UK version. Look at that, look at that guys, that's a huge, look at this, macaroni and cheese from Kraft, absolute crap, killing your body, look at this. Robert Kraft, very high Masonic Freemason, but we won't get into that yet. Um, look what he's putting, look what his brand, his business is feeding your children. Look, what it, look at all of these chemicals compared to the cheesy pasta in the UK, which yes, obviously does have certain chemicals in it as well. But I mean, that's a few chemicals compared to the 20 chemicals at least in this Kraft Mac and Cheese. I mean, some of these names right here, guys, if, if you really break it down, they're just numbers. There's certain foods out there with chemicals in them that are just numbers. Do your own research if you don't believe me. This is what we are feeding our children. This is what you are consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are things that no one wants to admit and talk about because a lot of times, you know, as Americans, you get very comfortable, all right? We've gotten too comfortable with our spoils of war to care about what we're putting in our bodies. So these companies and these brands that are looking to make the most money, profit the most, they're going to give us crap that is cheap. And this is a perfect example of just Three, and you can look at this up on your own guys, foodbabe.com as well as other websites, compare the ingredients in foods in the US versus foods in the UK and other countries. It is astonishing, it is significant. But one thing we can all agree upon is the soil's bad for every single country. On top of the chemicals we are putting in our processed foods and snacks, what about our vegetables? What about things that are grown in soil? our fruits, our plants, our crops, our agriculture. How is that? Well, 
Our food is lacking essential nutrients. Our foods we turn to for nutrition starting to lose their edge. Scientists across the globe are warning us of soil depletion and how tilling, chemicals, and overprocessing are harming our food sources. These modern farming practices don't allow soil to regenerate properly, leaving out important nutrients that used to make it to our plates. And now we're having to substitute those nutrients with vitamins, which is why we see the spike in vitamins. And I'd recommend all of you to take your daily vitamins because the nutrients that we used to be getting in the soil, we are no longer getting. Therefore, you are lacking those nutrients and those enzymes in your system unless you're taking a supplement for it, such as a vitamin to get that in your system. Things that used to be in food are no longer in there. What does this mean for our future? Simply the veggies that used to provide us with essential micronutrients are becoming less beneficial every year. In fact, research by nutritionalist David Thomas reveals that the food we are eating is simply not as good for us as it was 50 years ago. The rate of depletion appeared to be the greatest between 1978 and 1991. In those 13 years alone, vegetables lost 57% of their zinc. An important element for the immune system and male fertility. What is the goal of the new agenda that is being promoted and pushed out? Pop control, number one, had to abbreviate that. Pop control, and this obviously is affecting male fertility when there's a lack of zinc in our foods and vitamins and essential nutrients. Number two, the CV, the immune system is taking a hit. One key reason Americans are deficient in nutrients is that we're not eating enough nutrient-rich foods. 80% of Americans don't take in the recommended amount of fruits. 89% don't eat the recommended amount of vegetables. We don't get enough milk to meet our calcium requirements. I actually don't consume milk. So if I'm lacking in any vitamins, I usually just take calcium for it because I don't believe the human bodies were made to consume the milk of animals. Uh, if you really think about it, it's very weird in the first place and it's just not healthy for your system. And to that, the fact that our fruits and vegetables are lacking in nutrients and you can see why many people are nutrient deficient. The empty calories in our diets had led to a shocking rise in obesity in the U.S. population. In many states in 1989, less than 10% of people were considered to be obese. Whereas in 2009, just 20 years later, many states reported obesity in more than 30% of people. And obesity is still on the rise to this day. Just go to your local Walmart. Just go outside. Just walk around and look around. What do you see here in America? Rising obesity. People struggling with their health because of lies They've been taught lies that have been promoted by the government in the education system, which leads me to my next point right here. The new food pyramid. The food pyramid is a lie part one. Link will be in the description. Check this out for yourself since I don't have a lot of time to cover it. Um, you've struggled with weight your whole life or maybe your whole adult life. You're not necessarily fat, although you might be, but either way you like to lose some weight. You eat the foods you were taught were healthy, at least as much as you can, and you probably tried numerous diets, all that have left you hungry, depressed, a lot of depression going on, and absolutely longing for the day when you can get off them. And yet at the end of it all, you still haven't seen the results you were hoping for, and your doctor is still telling you to lose some weight. Sound familiar? If it does, you aren't alone. For nearly an entire generation, everything we've been told about food and healthy diets by our governments and scientists are wrong. This is some of the lies they've been telling us about nutrition and our food groups. If you look here, there are seven groups. The basic seven food categories was somewhat of an attempt to help people maintain some kind of healthy diet during the food rationing of World War II. The basic seven broke food into seven groups and suggested that people eat some from all the groups every day. That's it. Just eat some of everything on the chart and you'll be okay. So here we have the seven food groups that they were promoting in the 1940s. 
This might seem like an overly simplistic view of nutrition considering what we think we know about nutrition today. In reality, it was probably better than what they push on us now. So back then, they just told us you can eat a little bit from each group back in the 1940s. Now, however, and what you probably grew up when I went to school, this is what they promoted, was the food pyramid. This is the food pyramid right here, okay? So now they're recommending quantities of, and servings of how much food we should be consuming. Back if we go right here, they weren't promoting that. They just said some of each. Now they're giving parents and children recommendations of how much they should be eating and the quantities. Look at this, the biggest quantity, bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Six to 11 servings per day. I grew up seeing this in the cafeteria just like you did too. Underneath that, two to four servings of fruits, three to five servings of vegetables, two to three servings of milk, yogurt, and, and cheese, two to three servings of meat, poultry, fish, dried beans, eggs, and nuts groups, and at the very top, which you should be using the least of, according to this chart, fats, oils, and sweets. What they won't tell you, what they won't tell you in regards to sweets is bread, cereal, rice, and pasta all break down into your system as sugars glucose that's why when you eat those you feel so tired after you're unproductive you're depressed you are consuming all of this crap and they've been promoting this in schools in cafeterias to parents since the 1990s until now and they wonder why we are so obese and depressed as a population of people there was an attempt to revise this food pyramid. In 2011, Congress blocked an attempt by the USDA to revise the school lunch program thanks to multi-million dollar lobbying efforts by large food companies like Schwann's and ConAgra Foods. Congress was able to protect the status quo for those companies. It's crazy what money can buy and how greedy people will be. The status quo being that pizza sauce counts as a vegetable. No joke, pizza sauce is a vegetable according to the US Congress. And then they add a link to back that up. So to conclude this article about the lack of nutrition and the lies we've been told in the food pyramid, they leave us with five relevant points that I think we should go over. Number one, government nutrition guidelines haven't really changed in 60 years. Number two, the USDA has a huge conflict of interest between supporting modern industrial agriculture and telling Americans what we should eat. Number three, Congress has no shame whatsoever and will step in to legislate nutrition to benefit large corporate donors. Number four, Americans are getting fatter and fatter. Number five, many who try to lose weight on a supposed healthy diet simply can't it doesn't work conclusion pretty much everything we've ever been taught about a healthy diet is a lie and then in part two if you guys want to check it out we don't have time today they compare and contrast our earliest ancestors and their diets versus ours as well as why if you follow this food pyramid diet that the government's given to all the schools and they have preached about since the 1990s the 1940s if you follow this diet, you're going to live a very short, sick, obese, and unhealthy life. And these big corporations couldn't care less about your health or the health of your children. All they care about at the end of the day is making more money. And they're in cahoots as well. And I can make a video on this with pharmaceutical companies. They all work together to make more money. They put cancer in the food, so you get sick, and you have to use their drugs at the pharmacies. They're all backed by something. You just have to do your research. You have to be well informed. We live in the age of information for a reason. I want you guys to do your own research. Don't just listen to whatever you hear. Don't even just listen to what I'm saying. I want you guys to do your own research. 
and not just believe whatever is promoted and whatever is pushed out. Really think about what's going on right now. Who is the CV, the beer bug? Who is the beer bug affecting the most? People with underlying health conditions. How did people with underlying health conditions get into that position? What foods were they eating? What foods were promoted to them as children that they grew up getting addicted to because there's chemicals in it and it affects male fertility. Think about these things. I really want you guys to become critical thinkers and do your own research here. It goes deep. The rabbit hole is a lot deeper than we think. So I appreciate you guys. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button and share this content with someone that might not know this information and needs to know this information. Have a blessed rest of your day. I'm gone. Have a good one.